Hi there, this is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto, and today we're looking at a 1972 Nissan Caravan with an interior camper conversion. Now in the title of this video, I have it marked as for sale, and the reason for that is because this vehicle is, in fact, for sale. Usually the vehicles on our channel are not for sale, and this one is only because we accidentally own it. And I'll tell you more about that in just a second. Now, once the title of it changes from for sale to not for sale, <laughs> then this vehicle will not be for sale anymore. Hoping somebody comes to buy it uh, because we need to get rid of it. So let's take a look at the vehicle here. It's 1972 Nissan Caravan diesel 2200cc rear wheel drive with a four speed manual column shift. The mileage on it is unknown because it's a five digit odometer and it says 33,671 kilometers. The auction grade is a three with an interior C and its original blue or original paint changed to blue and yellow. This isn't the original color, obviously. Sales points are diesel vehicle with manual transmission and it says it's an old vehicle so they can't confirm the mileage on the car. It's also been color changed. The inspector found this. Interior is dirty and has some various modifications to it. Left door mirror is missing. You can see it there. Headliner is saggy. Underside surface rust corrosion and painted. Now I did look at the underside and I do have a video to complement this. In fact, a number of videos to complement this. And one of them shows the rust on the car. And if you're interested in the car, I recommend requesting that video and we'll send you a link to it. The vehicle rust is not as bad as it looks on first, uh, first sight, and that video explains it. Left sliding door comes up. It just turns out that you have to slam it pretty hard. It's okay. Uh, okay, the bed or the trunk section has various modifications to it. Front seat, one part, it's like uh, modare, I don't know, dented. Various scratches, dents paint peeling and then the body on it here has some rust and corrosion in various places and quite a bit of this kind of surface rust. Okay so let's take a look. Let's put that in properly. While we're taking a look I'll explain what happened with this one. So first off a Nissan Caravan this generation I wanted to see what these were worth because I knew how much I spent on this one but I didn't know how much they were selling for. And so I looked online to try to find one, and I can only find one other one in all of Japan, this generation, for sale. Because they're so old here in Japan, and because, you know, they're just a regular diesel van from the 70s, people just didn't hold on to them. Possibly a lot got exported, some of them just got too cheap and got used up. And this would have become an old vehicle during Japan's bubble era known as the uh, time where all the asset prices went up in Japan and so everyone became suddenly extremely rich and they had no need for old vehicles at that time. And so vehicles from the 70s, a lot of them didn't last because of that late 60s, early 70s. This one here looks like it has been, well, I don't know what it's been. It's really hard to sell. tell. It, you know, somebody probably cared about it a lot they painted it into a very 70s paint job. We are joking, and the name of this vehicle is the Scooby-Doo van. And so, very unique. And so, why do we have this? Well, we made an error bidding on a vehicle and accidentally won this when we didn't want to. We didn't even really know anything about it. The bid was set on the incorrect car, and uh, we ended up winning it. And so now we don't really need it. In fact, this is a diesel engine, and. I did look into converting it to be emissions compliant here in Yokohama because you're not allowed to have diesel vehicles here in Yokohama and I wanted to use it as our company vehicle because our company vehicle here is just too small for all the stuff that we want to carry in it. And so this would have been awesome and I kind of like the looks and the, the quirkiness of it but alas it would cost us $10,000 to convert this to be emissions compliant. And even at that, you know, it's, it's just not worth putting the money into, even to have something unique that nobody else has. So I'm curious to know how many of these are running around in Japan right now. I don't really know, but uh, let's take a look at the details. First off, we'll, um, 
I want to show you a couple of things because these are the important things for classic cars. You want to make sure that all your trim is in good shape and pretty much all the trim is very good. Right there, headlight bezels, grill, front bumper, markers, all very good. Wipers are good, that's less important. This one looks like the plastic's corroded a little bit, but I'm sure having the mirrors converted over to a more modern mirror wouldn't hurt the value of this very much. Okay, it is missing one piece of the side trim here. So take a look at how that looks, just that one missing piece. Deluxe badge there, this trim is okay. Stuff like this would be the impossible bits to find if you were ever to try to rebuild this car, which somebody might want to do. Tail lights, very good shape. Now there is a lot of surface rusting on it, but like I said in the rust video, almost all the metal is really solid and really good. In particular, these areas here that look really bad, really solid and so could be repaired uh, a lot easier than most modern vehicles. Next thing, let's take a look at window gaskets because they can be impossible to find. And these ones, no cracking, no separation, uh, no problems at all on there. This one here, also very good. This is a sliding window, and so it's important that that one's in good shape. And the rubber that goes along here, also very good too. This one, the windshield, very good all the way around. Okay. Now, in terms of dents, not really anything on the car, just the rust. And here, on this sill, is probably the worst of it. But once again, if you are interested, you're going to have to uh, check that one video. Now because the vehicle has so much of that surface rust on it, it's going to need to be brought down to nothing and then repainted. And so basically any of the scratches don't really matter that much. You could drive it like this if you're interested in having that sort of uh, classic, never been restored look. Some people like that. I'm going to show you the roof. It has a lot of, see the auction sheet, the auction sheet shows C2 various on the roof. So. Let me show you that. It's peeling paint. It looks worse than it actually is. And it has holes cut in the top for uh, modification. Probably there was uh, something mounted on the top previously. And if you look at the sills, there is some surface rust in there, but no hardcore corrosion in the rain gutter. So hard to believe that with this little rust, the 1972 because a lot of the 1989 you know 15 years older than that vehicles have rusted down to nothing now especially land cruisers and stuff like that okay so rear wheel drive no power steering let's take a look at the interior here and there is some corrosion underneath here which you can see in that other video but otherwise very very nice the yeah, dashboard is in great shape with only a mild crack in it right here This one here is an evaporative cooling, but the fan doesn't seem to work. So it's like an early model AC. And three seats here. I think this is what they were talking about when they said bent. It's they're not sitting in there completely properly. But I did drive the vehicle and it seems to, uh, seems to feel fine when you're driving it. The brakes on it are soft. Probably is going to need to have some of the brakes uh, worked on. It does stop the vehicle, but they feel too soft. Okay, so no tears in the seats. That's fantastic, especially for such an old vehicle. Jumping in. And we have the brake lamp on too. So you can hear the engine is nice. Engine's been running at regular operating temperature now for about 15 minutes.
Okay, so let's take a look at the back area. Super tall roof on this one. You can almost stand up in the back. Okay, sliding door here. And so there's the entrance. So this one, I'm gonna show you the back first because it's mostly just a bed. But the bed is full tatami mats. And so that's actually really cool. These are the Japanese mats that you'll see in pretty much every house in Japan. Made out of straw. The interior does smell old, but it doesn't smell terribly bad. So here's what you have. Full siding has been carpeted or fabric. And then there's plumbing in the sides here for your heater. As you can see there, have controls here. And I heard something come on. These window covers have the windows, dome windows there. This one here, the Velcro is a little bit bad, so it doesn't like to stick up there as well as it once did still will if you jam it in there and then underneath the bed here is cabinetry so you can store things in there and then a long one underneath the center section as well okay climbing in here so dual lamps here curtains on the window there that box there is your rear heater but I don't know if it works or not a box there that's not attached to anything it's just sitting there box here with like a water heater or uh, I don't know thermos two lights on this side vents up there for your heater and your air conditioning for the back speakers up there and the headliner is actually in pretty good shape I know the auction sheet said that it was saggy but it actually looks pretty good to me I imagine a TV used to go up there with like a DVD player in there and I believe inside here is also like a it's like an AC slash heater unit and a cooler is in here let me see if I can pull that off Wow, this is really cool. Portable refrigerator. Neat. That is old school. Okay, so this is the refrigerator, then that must mean that up here is the heater unit? An AC in the back? I don't know. There's curtain rails here, and then also curtain rails here. Here's what the front looks like. And we're at the door now. Okay. So I think that something like this is special. See, I didn't really have to slam it that hard. And I think that uh, stuff like this just doesn't come around very often. The engine in these is known to be pretty reliable. I've heard that they're still in use today in diesel generators because they'll last forever and ever. And so it is a unique vehicle. I'd really like to see somebody get it. If nobody's interested, I'm gonna send it back to auction after a couple of weeks. We'll see. But I think converting one into a really nice interior for a camper would be really something special for such a unique and rare vehicle. Okay, so that's going to be the end. If you're interested, let me know. And let me know by email because I might not be seeing all the comments on here. If you want to buy it, for sure email me and I'll send you the set of about 80 to 100 pictures that I took of it as well as other video clips and whatnot. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and have a nice day.